Hi, I'm Mark Harrison, and you may know me from my various music instruction books or my work at the Grove School of Music here in Los Angeles. Today's lesson is focusing on contemporary jazz piano, and I'll be referencing some examples from my contemporary jazz piano book, which you may have seen at some stores in your neighborhood or perhaps at your library. This example will make use of dominant chords, which are a staple across many blues and jazz styles. Let's take a moment to review the spelling of a basic dominant seventh chord. For example, a D7 consists of the notes D, F sharp, A, and C. If we spell that chord using intervals up from the root, here's a review of the intervals. D to F sharp is a major third, D to A is a perfect fifth, and D to C is a minor seventh interval. Okay, now in many blues and jazz styles, it's very effective to simply isolate the third and seventh of this chord. For example, if I play the root of the chord D down here, and then simply play the third and seventh upstairs, that's F sharp and C, we get this sound. It's a fairly sparse sound, but it still defines the quality of the dominant chord very effectively. Another interesting thing we can notice is that these notes here, are also the 7-3 of this A-flat 7. Okay, it's like the 7-3's got flipped around. On the D7, the 3rd was below the 7th, but on the A-flat 7, the 7th was below the 3rd. Okay, that gives rise to a technique known as tritone substitutions, where instead of the D7, I might use an A-flat 7 in some contexts. Um, that's very typical of jazz harmony, for example. Okay, so I'm going to uh, construct a simple progression using dominant chords and isolating just the sevenths and thirds in this way. And during this progression, we'll see that uh, some of these plurality issues will come up. That is to say, we'll find that uh, certain seven three voicings are shared um, between chords. And also, we'll get into some of the uh, rhythmical issues after that as well as to how it might work in a contemporary jazz groove. Okay. So let's say I build a progression starting off with a D7 in a lower register this time. Here's my 3-7. Moving to a G7. Again, just a 7-3 voicing. The F and B is the 7-3 of a G7. Moving to a C7. The E and B flat is the 3-7 of a C7. Again, I'm just playing the root of C in my left hand. Moving to an F7. E flat on A now is the 7-3 of the F7. Moving along to an A flat 7, the 7 3 of that is G flat and C, which you might remember is the same notes as we used for the D7 earlier. Moving to a D flat 7, the 3 7 now is a F and B, or F and C flat, technically speaking. These were the same notes we used on a G7 earlier. And then finally, moving back to a C7, again with a 3 7 of E and B flat. So I'm going to try and construct um, a phrase using each of these chords for two beats each and uh, just finishing off with a C7 on four beats at the end. And um, let's uh, see how that would sound. Here we go. So just to review these chords, we have D7, the G7, to F7, to A flat 7, to D flat 7, and finally to C7. Okay. Alright. Now, those rhythms were pretty straight, obviously. So, one thing I can do to kind of spice that up in a contemporary jazz context is just sort of play around with beat 3 a little bit. In other words, rather than land straight on 3, I might anticipate beat 3 uh, in the right hand voicing, typically by a 16th note in these styles. That does impart a little bit of a funky or more contemporary effect. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, try and do that again with these same voicings in the same progression, starting with our D7. Let's give it a shot. another technique I discuss in the contemporary jazz book where we extend the 7-3 voicing 
by adding a third node in the right hand. Um, I refer to this technique as 7-3 extended. Now, the third node is typically played with the pinky of the right hand um, and is often uh, an upper extension or alteration on the dominant chord, which will give it some uh, significant color. For example, on the D7 that we started out with, if I were to add the note F up at the top, that's a sharp 9 or raised 9 on the chord. Okay, kind of an interesting color, very uh, jazzy. Okay. Then moving to the G7, if I were to add E flat on the top, that's a sharp 5 or flatted 13th on the chord. Okay. If I were to keep that E flat on the following C7, that again is a sharp 9 on that chord, this time making a C7 sharp 9. On the following F7, if I added a note D on top, that's a 13th of that chord, essentially upgrading that to an F13. On to our A flat 7. If I add the note F on top, I have an A flat 13. These three notes were what we used on the D7 a moment ago. Now I'm using them on the A flat 7. Okay. Then moving to our D flat 7, if I add the note E flat on top, that upgrades it to a D flat 9. These three notes were what I used on the G7 raised 5 a few moments earlier. Finally moving to the C7 at the end, if I add a D on top of that, that creates a, a C9 in total. So let me just play some uh, half note voicings again, but this time with these 7-3 um, extended sounds, which are you know, a little more sophisticated in character, I think you'll agree. Here we go. I could have a little fun with that too, uh, rhythmically, by using some of those 16th anticipations and rephrasings that uh, we worked with earlier, just with the 7-3 voicings. So let's uh, give that a shot. Here we go. Again, starting with our D7. enjoyed those uh, excerpts and concepts out of my contemporary jazz piano book. Uh, don't forget for information on uh, all of our books and products and online lessons, please check out our website at harrisonmusic.com and uh, also there is information on the website about uh, my online lessons and this is the view of me that you would see in the lessons and so uh, please uh, contact us if that's at all of interest to you. In the meantime, Good luck with your contemporary jazz piano stylings. Thanks again.